Hello everyone, how's everybody doing today? I'm out here at my favorite uh, outdoor recording studio, although I'm not on the observation deck today. Got this gorgeous sunrise coming up, trying to burn through the fog here. It's really foggy this morning, but it is so nice and peaceful. Heard some woodpeckers, rooster pheasants uh, crowing, morning doves. It's just a gorgeous morning out here. So, you know, every now and then I come across a knife that really intrigues me. And I want to do something in depth on the knife because it's a, it's a knife company that I didn't know about before, never heard of before, and yet it has a great history. And I kind of teased this knife on a uh, YouTube short, but this is a J. Russell uh, Green River Works knife that I purchased recently. And I've been doing a lot of research on this company and, and uh, trying to find out about this particular knife. You can't really see a tang stamp on it. It was, uh, it was etched here. And at the right angle, you can just barely read the etching on it. So it's not a terribly old knife. I'm thinking maybe 50, 60 years old. Uh, the earlier blades had a tang stamp, or the blade was actually stamped instead of etched or printed. So that tells me it's not uh, from like the 1800s or anything, but it's still a very cool, interesting knife. And I got a little booklet here that came with the knife. It was... Uh, Tied to the sheath here talks about those Green River knives so there's a nice little pamphlet that came along with the knife lots of uh, great history on J. Russell and Harrington the two oldest uh, knife factories in the United States and I'll be getting into to more of that in the history this might be kind of a long video so I'm doing this little introduction then I'll go back and uh, go home to my in-home recording studio, if, as, as it were, and uh, I'll try to read the history. And it might take a few minutes to get through the history, but it's very important history. So at the end of that, I'll be showing some more close-ups, uh, showing you the details of this knife, how I determined what I think the age of the knife is, what type of knife it is, and I'm going to go over the importance of this knife and knives like this, the old hickory uh, hunting knife, it's basically a cut down butcher knife. But these blade styles were very important in our nation's history. So I look forward to uh, shooting the rest of this video and getting it uploaded. This is your intrepid social media reporter, Hawkeye Hound, with an important newsflash. A rift has erupted within the Delights' gigantic social media conglomerate. History Delights is charged that Knife Delights has misappropriated content. History Delights is demanding that videos containing history content be posted exclusively on History Delights. A spokesman for Knife Delights has retorted with a brief statement which says, Nana Nana Boo Boo, stay tuned for updates on this developing story. This has been Hawk Eye Hound reporting. John Russell founded Green River Works in 1834. His first shop was on the banks of the Green River near Greenfield, Massachusetts. It was the second cutlery factory established in the United States. The first factory established in 1818 was by Henry Harrington. Russell retired in 1868 and died in 1874. The company changed its name several times. It was first changed to J. Russell and Company, Green River Works, then to John Russell Manufacturing Company, and then John Russell Cutlery Company. Green River knives were a staple of Western settlers and Native Americans. One feature of their skinning knives was that the blade was bevel sharpened on one side of the blade. This was done so that during the skinning process, it kept the edge of the knife firmly against the flesh which reduced the chance of accidentally slashing the hide. The knives would then be shipped, shipped west in kegs and would cost a trader $1.50 to $3.50 per dozen. They were then sold for $0.50 cents to $1.50 each. These knives cost more than other knives of the period. 
The cost did not stop them from being popular among plainsmen and Native Americans. Green River blades became known as the standard of quality of anything being traded. The phrase, up to the Green River, was used to signify that something was first rate. The expression, give it to him up to the Green River, meant stabbing someone up to the blade stamp. The stamp was located near the hilt of the knife. In 1884, Harrington introduced the Dexter trade name. This was a line of kitchen and table cutlery named after one of Henry Harrington's sons, Dexter Harrington. Russell and Harrington merged in 1933 to form the Russell Harrington Cutlery Company. In 2001, the company changed its name to Dexter Russell Inc. Dexter Russell has a division named Green River Tactical. This line of knives features old hunting and skinning knife patterns, along with knives with modern steels and handles. Additionally, I have found the traditional pattern blade blanks on various knife-making suppliers' websites. It's time to get this video wrapped up. Just a couple quick points. In the history, I talk about uh, Harrington and Russell being the first factories. There were certainly other knife makers in America uh, before they opened their factories. I think what they're referring to is these were actual factories set up to mass produce knives. Secondly, I've been primarily talking about the uh, Green River Works fixed blade knives. I also know that there were some slip joint knives made and I ran across a little bit of history where it talks about the Green River knives being made in Sheffield and I'm speculating here but I'm assuming they're talking about uh, their line of slip joint knives were made in Sheffield. Now getting back to the uh, John Russell and Green River Works fixed blade knives, it's important to note that back when our land was uh, being settled and uh, westward expansion, uh, the fur trappers, the settlers, they had very basic hunting knives. And we look at these knives today and we think, well, this knife can't do this and this knife can't do that. It doesn't have the you know, most up-to-date steel, it doesn't have micarta handles, etc. But we have to give uh, respect where, you know, respect is due. There was a lot of knives. Now here's the old hickory that I've referred to before. This is uh, their version of a hunting knife. It's basically just down a, a cut-down butcher knife. But, you know, these are the kinds of knives that help settle the West. They didn't have big fancy Bowie knives and all of that. I know they get depicted in the movies, but more often than not, your average settler or Native American had a basic knife just like this. Basic carbon steel. Here's another example. Of course, this is the uh, Rapala. I did a review on that. But again, it's a hunting knife, like a small game knife. But you can see it's a very thin blade. They didn't have big, fancy, thick blades back then, or the average person did not. So, what can I tell you about this knife? Well, I spent a lot of time online trying to identify this knife. And I could not find anything exactly like it. Now, it, the blade is etched. You probably won't pick it up. you got to get the right angle on it. You probably saw a picture of it earlier. Um, it is full tang. As far as trying to date the knife, the fact that it's etched and not stamped into the blade uh, makes it a later knife. The fact that it has brass rivets instead of steel rivets makes it a you know, more later knife. But I could not find an exact copy of this knife. Uh, one, you know, the end here is rounded and it has a rounded finger groove here. Almost a, a built-in finger notch there. It does make it very comfortable. And then we get to the sheath. And to me, the sheath looks homemade. You see how it's kind of cut off there on the on the end? It's not finished nice. 
and the stitching is not the best fanciest looking so I'm just wondering um, if somebody replaced the sheath by making this one or if the knife didn't come with a sheath and somebody made this now it could have been no factory produced but it doesn't look that way to me see it just looks unfinished not very professional in that regards and knowing the reputation for quality of knives for Green River um, I just don't think they'd put out a sheath like this so in conclusion there are several possibilities for this knife it is either a very basic simple hunting knife it could have been a kitchen style knife, like a paring knife. Or the closest thing I found of a knife like this, as an example online, was a oyster or a clam knife. All of the other uh, Green River knives um, had like three rivets in it or four rivets. The only one that I could find that had two rivets, two big rivets like this, was an oyster knife however the end of the blade was curved so it might be a clam knife instead of an oyster knife somebody out there on the either seaboard that's used to dealing with clams and oysters maybe you can let me know but anyway in conclusion I found this uh, knife company very fascinating to be able to research and it's just a great part of our history so until next time Everyone go out and have a very delightful day.